will for this Mass, in loving memory of Mary Kappa. Then, together with our different intentions, we now begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We are sent here the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father for intercession. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are not at the Holy Father, you are not at the Lord, you are not at the Most High. Gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection. Gracious grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reap eternal glories. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at, at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do ha have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Is found so your son. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known amongst the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to, to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. 
throughout the earth, his judgment prevailed. Rejoice, my heart, and seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding by a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath, the oath with Isaac. Rejoice, my heart, and seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles away from Jerusalem called Emmaus. They were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only stranger to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we're hoping that would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us that they were at the tomb early in the, in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him, they did not see. He said to them, Oh, how foolish are you! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer in things and enter into his glory, then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the word referred to him in all the scriptures. As they were approaching to the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further, but they urged him, stay with us. It is near the evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said blessing, broke it and gave to them. With that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together with them and those with them who were saying, The Lord has fully been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted 
what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading, we encounter now the apostles doing the work that the Lord was doing before he was crucified. That means they continue with the same ministry of healing. They continue with the same ministry of forgiving sins to show us that their ministry was Jesus' ministry that was aimed at the holistic restoration of a human person. And Peter, when he meets this beggar, Peter tells him openly, I have made a silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. And Peter not identifies to this leper, I mean to this beggar, that he had the most precious gift. And that was the gift of our Savior. When you have Jesus in you, you have all that you need. And when you don't have, regardless of what you have, you have nothing. And exactly is that power that he had in Jesus that made him to command and restore this beggar his life. In Jesus' name, I command. And the crippled man from death, from birth, was given back his life. In the gospel, we see how the two apostles begin wandering. And the reason why they wander is because they feel that the most precious gift that they had invested is God. That our hope was, it was him who was to restore Israel. Life was never the same without their master. There's nothing that could ever console them. And they just felt like running away from the situation. They never wanted to identify with the scandal of the cross. They never wanted to be laughing stock. That someone meets them like they met Peter and say he was also one of them. We know how much we flatter when things don't work to people's expectation. Maybe we'd meet people who knew them and said, imagine, you were just here bragging around, wasting your time, and they see how you invested in them. But there's one thing that we learn, that Jesus comes to join and walk with them. He does not only make that physical walk, but he also walks with them spiritually. And he does that by patient listening to find where they are and build on their situation so to advance, to take them to a higher level. And it's there then that they began opening their eyes. At times, as human beings, we are not very patient to help people as we help them from where they are. I feel I have already the solution, and I just want to come, bam, and give that solution. At times, in doing so, we even destroy the good-intentioned 
more that we ever want to make. Supposing Jesus just came and began manifesting, maybe he could have even have scared them. He would have said, oh, this should be a ghost. And maybe, who knows, they would have run away from him. But he begins little by little, walking with them. And he walks them through the scriptures. And he affirms it. They, they come to that self-discovery when they see him at the breaking of bread. It's the same Jesus that you and me worship. It's the same Jesus who joins us in our different depressing situations, walking with us spiritually. Do we open our hearts to recognize him at the breaking of bread? Do we open our minds to recognize him in his word? We pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that the experiences that we encounter in these days when we go through the resurrection story may strengthen our faith and our relationship with God. And above all, that we may learn from the apostles so that we treasure what they took for granted. They, we opened all the scriptures, they saw all that was happening. But how seriously did they take it? And eventually, they were surprised that you and me every day, when we come to listen to the word of God, every day, when we join in the breaking of bread, how much does that open my mind? How much does it strengthen my faith? That the church may be found pleasing to God during this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all who are unable to work due to physical or psychological limitation may be given the grace to endure the hardships they face, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That this community of faith may grow ever more deeply in God's transformative love, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all those who have died, members of our parish community, members of our individual families, especially those we are remembering, to pray for during this Easter season, whose names we have inscribed on flower envelopes and the mass remembrance, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We now take a moment to offer those prayers that lie in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this great offering, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all of creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine of offering, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all people, receive, we pray, O oh Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is too right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this season time, above all cloudy, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. But dying, he has destroyed our death by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heaven powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave it thanks to prophet, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mister of Faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your child spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Our Master, our soul, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as Pouch, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be forbears to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord's command and form by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day to our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace. I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sack of the Lamb. Let us pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Spirit. Amen. Go forth the mass ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.